ESPN radio host, co-host of Spain and Fitz here on 97.3 ESPN. And it looks like we got him right now. Uh, Jason, just for your information, I have been abandoned by all mankind, and I'm doing the show by myself right now. So I'm hoping this is you on the phone. <laughs> it is. and I'm, You know what? My modern technology, I was supposed to be with you. I'm late. My phone never rang. I'm sitting right here. My phone never rang. So I figured I'd call you and we could hang out. There we go. Come well, on. I appreciate that because uh, Mike Gill's on vacation uh, for the rest of the week. Uh, Hunter Brody's dealing with a personal situation that has him running late for the come in for the show. So I'm literally producing and hosting the show by myself, which I'm sure is something that uh, you're familiar with as someone who's had to do a million things yourself at one time. Yeah, well, no, I can. I got to be honest. If you're like producing, the one thing that I have no idea how to do in this business is uh, anything that to, to do with the side of the glass where you actually have to press buttons. Oh, okay. Let me press buttons. <laughs> like, you know, like, Anything, I walk up and they're like, you can touch these two buttons. That is all you are allowed to do, which is probably for the best because, you know, I am inherently clumsy enough that I would screw it all up. So just the fact that you're keeping us on, the, you know, live air, I think is a, a, a statement to what you're doing that's good. Come on. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. So uh, a bunch of things I wanted to get to with you today, but I got to start off with this Jay Wright news that came off about an hour and a half ago, comes out with a statement. He says, uh, you know, I'm not going to leave Villanova, but I think the Sixers are an incredible opportunity for somebody else. And I want to get your perspective on that because I think it kind of you know, the whole Jay Wright thing is a bit of a conflict. You know, college, the NBA is a mixed bag when it comes to coaching, but Jay Wright is a huge figure in this area. I know that Jay Williams on KJZ here on ESPN Radio has said multiple times that he thinks Jay Wright should have been the man for the job and Jay Wright just took his name out of the running. Yeah, and that's this is hard because you're right. There's so much loyalty in the region and the area to Jay Wright, and there's so much belief in who he is as a coach. And I think that's warranted, obviously. But when you are a coach at this level, you start you got to start to think about what's at stake and and where you are and how comfortable you are, and and also how volatile coaching is in the NBA. I mean, how is it that you can be a coach of the year candidate one year and suddenly you can find yourself unemployed the next? So you start thinking about sort of. Uh, what it means for Jay Wright. He he makes great money being the head coach of Villanova. He's a rock star where he is. He doesn't have to worry about, you know, anything uh, as, as far as his athletes going out and making life more difficult for him. And he doesn't have to worry about tarnishing his reputation in any way by going to the NBA and not succeeding. So I think that we, you know, so often we, we decide that college football and college basketball coaches should go to the NFL or the NBA. But let's remember that the games have become so different in so many ways and you can make so much money in either of those uh, areas. I'm not sure there's as much incentive and incentivization. I can't say it, incentivizing to get everybody to move up a level in the minds of some. You were close enough. That's all that matters. I know what you meant. I think the listeners did Perfect. as well. So <laughs> we're good, but, but seriously, I think it's a good point you bring up because the money is almost the same. So the incentive for the coaches to leave, from college to the NBA maybe isn't there as much as it was 15, 20, 30 years ago when guys like Larry Brown and Patino and Calipari were doing it. Do you think, though, now looking right now at the situation with Billy Donovan, that maybe because of what's happening with some of these coaches, you know, beeline, you know, hit that whole mess in Cleveland, Donovan having a maybe not the best situation in OKC, even though he himself has done a good job, how do you think the future of guys jumping from college to the pros is going to be. Yeah. And that's a really great question because it's not a simple transition and the way that you treat the athletes and the way that, you know, you communicate with the athletes. I, I, it's not simple. There's no easy, clear cut cookie cutter situation for it. You know, I mean, heck we even forget on the football side. Uh, let's remember that, uh, you know, Nick Saban obviously didn't have the success he wanted as the Dolphins coach. So you think about how great you can be in one area. You got to figure out what you love. I mean, if you're an NBA coach, then you have a particular you know, thing about the game that you love and you love working with the best of the best and uh, you love being able to sort of mold talent and bring them together. But if you're a college coach, you love the recruiting process. You love the fact that you're constantly rebuilding your roster. You love the fact that you have new opportunity to go in and, and make impact on young men's lives. And, and so I think that what feeds them is so different. And then the other stuff, part of it is, where are the rock star coaches? I mean, you want to be a rock star coach that everybody knows by name. You have a much better shot at doing that at the college level because the 76ers are not going to be known nationally for who their coach is. They're going to be known nationally for whatever they decide to do with Embiid and Simmons. So 
you know, you've got to be willing to really be the, the second fiddle through that process. And if you're a college coach, you never have to acquiesce to that. So, you know, I, I think that the best of the best college coaches have such cushy situations that it's going to be, I, I don't see them moving up as often. Jason Fitz joining us here on the Boardwalk on the hotline on 97.3 ESPN. He's the co-host of Spain and Fitz tonight, 7 p.m. right here on 97.3 ESPN, leading you up to Rockets Thunder Game 7. Speaking of Game 7s, because you were on today, for those who didn't hear this, and I'm sure you've, you've seen this already, uh, Jamal Murray was on with SVP on SportsCenter last night. And the answer he had to this one question, or this one statement, shall I call it, uh, I think is the funniest thing I have heard in a long time. And, and that's the only thing that matters. But between that, look, you guys both look gassed, both sides. And the Clippers, we know, is going to be a rugged test. Between now and Thursday, what do you do? We play Thursday? You yeah. don't get two days off? No. No, it's Thursday. Man. Um... <laughs> I mean, Jason, I mean, how, how incredible is it on national TV? Jamal Murray didn't even know Game 7 was Thursday. <laughs> I mean, that is so incredible. When you think about just the the honest reality of that moment and sort of how stunned he seems there, like I can't imagine when you're gassed as they are and you're coming into that moment, you're like, wait, we got to play again Thursday? I mean, that's real, you know, and that's part of where the bubble is really going to separate some of these teams. That's why, you know, frankly, uh, you know, the Lakers got to be sitting back saying, hey, let, it, let this thing go as long as possible for everybody not named the Lakers. And I know the Clippers probably feel the same. So, it's, it, it's going to take a lot for these guys to find that next gear in the bubble when they're playing so many games so close together. How did you feel about watching uh, a rerun back of 90s basketball last night between the Jazz and the Nuggets? Look, the Jazz and the Nuggets have been giving us such an incredible series that, you know, the unfortunate thing is that they're markets that not a lot of fans care about. And that that's just, it's un- I, I say unfortunate because what they've been doing through the duration of that series has been up until that point, giving us such dynamic high scoring guys, pushing the ball guys scoring from everywhere. It's been so much fun to watch. And then you get a total slug fest, you know, they get for, for all of it. And, and that's just, man, it, that's, I think it was the best series by far in the first round. It's the best series we're going to end up seeing throughout the entire playoffs, but because it's Utah and Denver, it just doesn't move the needle nationally. And hopefully, you know, as the, the stars sort of, sort of shine brighter for them, they'll have an opportunity for that to happen moving forward. Because Jamal Murray is so much thinking fun to watch right now. It just, he just needs to be a bigger part of the conversation so that everybody starts talking about it. Yeah, there's also a contingent of Sixer fans who are shaking their fists right now on the radio. We could have had Jamal Murray, which I don't know if that's really true or not. Mm-hmm. But anyway, uh, Jason, let's flip it over. I want to ask you also about college football because – I was listening to the ESPN Daily podcast this morning with uh, Paul Feinbaum and Pablo Torre, and I think Paul Feinbaum brought up something that, you know, I think is very interesting, and that is he brought up the fact that, you know, people are saying, you know, well, is there going to be a little bit of a, a feel of, like, this is the JV because of the fact that so many guys are opting out. We have now two of LSU's best players opting out. We have no Big Ten as of right now, no Pac-12 as of right now. But Paul brought up the fact, I want to get your opinion on this, he says that he feels like because people are so invested in these programs that the players themselves on the field is going to be less important to the fans than it is the teams just getting on the field and playing. A thousand percent correct. And look, this is the moment where we easily separate ourselves from the cover sports from the people that consume them. And it's one of the most dangerous things you can do. It's, it's a little like the argument that preseason football stinks. We hear that all the time. But now you, when you actually talk to fans, you'll find that a lot of fans love preseason football, and there's a reason for it. Diehards love it. When you start talking about college football, it will never be about my quarterback versus your quarterback. It'll always be about the logo on my helmet versus the logo on your helmet. And One of the things that really hit me last year traveling with game day was how much passion these guys have for their team, but you can go up to people that are painted head to toe that are all into the game and you can give them a, Hey, who's number so-and-so for LSU. And it could be a lifelong LSU fan. And they don't seem to know players don't resonate with, with the fans the same way the jerseys do. And frankly, if you're an SEC fan, as long if you're a Bama fan, as long as you beat Auburn and Georgia, you don't care who's playing on which side. You don't care what the obstacles are. So as long as for the college football diehards, as long as there are games, 
who's not playing won't be the conversation. It will just be to my scrubs, be your scrubs. And if so, I can now trash talk you for the next decade, and that's all I want to do. Also, what about the fact that this whole situation with you know fans in the stands? I mean, we you know for the, for those of us like me who are watching uh, Austin P versus Central Arkansas on Saturday night, you know, you saw basically was the equivalent of maybe a couple thousand people in the stands, and I think across college football that could have a huge impact on some of these games because going to the swamp or going to Death Valley uh, isn't the same if there's not seventy thousand people there screaming. Yeah, you're you're totally right. And I've talked to a couple of players about this on the college and NFL landscape, and it affects both sides of it. Because we've all heard, especially during training camps and spring practices or preseason, we always hear about, you know, practice warriors, guys that come out and they're just gods on a practice field. And then when they get out on the field for the games to count, they just can't find that extra gear. And conversely, you hear about guys that may not be great practice, but boy, when the crowd's out there, they find that extra magic. That little variable being non-existent this season – is going to make a big difference. You're going to find out who can self-motivate, who can self-sort of focus, and who can go out and make the most of it without any of the added benefit that you get from the adrenaline or the kick from the crowd or any of that stuff. It's all gone. So I think it's going to be a major factor, and it's going to be a major neutralizer in the NFL and college football this fall that, uh, you know, there won't be a real home field advantage. So suddenly, other than the fact that you may have to be in cold weather and you're not used to it, other than that, there's just not much – it will be different from one stadium to the next. So, you know, frankly, the most disciplined teams, the teams that have the best focus are going to be the teams that come out and win. He's Jason Fitz, co-host of Spain and Fitz tonight, 7 o'clock right here on 97.3 ESPN. Follow him on Twitter at Jason Fitz, and he joins us every Wednesday on the Sports Bash here on 97.3 ESPN. Jason, I appreciate you jumping on. I appreciate your flexibility, and I'll be listening to you and Sarah tonight knowing that you guys have producers helping you. Look, I'm just saying, you are basically Don Henley at this point. You've gone from being part of the Eagles to having your own thing now. You've gone fully solo. You're handling it all yourself. you got to start asking yourself, do you really need the other guys? Like, maybe you're just headed for solo greatness. Uh, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say I don't need anybody else. My ego isn't that big, but I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate the compliment. I, I, I believe that teamwork is better than solo work, but that's just a personal preference. So. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Have a great week, my friend. Thanks for having me. No problem. Thank you, Jason. Of course, Spade of Fitz tonight, 7 o'clock right here on 97.3 ESPN. Jason Fitz joins the Sports Bash every Wednesday here on 97.3 ESPN.